I can definitely say By the Grace of the Gods is the next or the new Ascendance of a Bookworm, and for those who have seen that anime or read its source material, you're probably going to say, well, duh, look at what it's doing. But for those who haven't either seen or watched Ascendance of a Bookworm, one, I highly recommend you do so because it's one of the best easy guys I've ever seen. It just feels to me that this show is doing a form of very similar to that. I know I'm not here to say like one copy of the other or it's mimicking the other. I'm saying that as a very high compliment. A Sentence of a Bookworm is a story about a girl who dies and reincarnates and kind of like takes over another girl's body in a medieval world and she uses her modern knowledge to implement and create modern technologies and make a better life for herself with some magical undertones. That's honestly what seemingly is happening in a different coat of paint with By the Grace of the Gods with slimes and just honestly wanting to live a good life but a lot of your inventions like a raincoat that prevents you from ever getting wet would make very good clothing lines that would make you probably very rich or at least give you a very good life. There's a little bit of conflict here and there. I mean our boy Ryoma does talk about how he's fought off burglars and monsters and things like that so there definitely is a small hint of darker undertones but at the end of the day it's a show about characters living a good life and the fact that in two episodes we've yet to see a bad person but really just good people who just want to look out for honestly a kid who seemingly has no family members in sight it gives you this very good warm fuzzy feeling inside and just brings a giant grim to your face and honestly i enjoyed episode two even more than episode one and i thought episode one was a wholesome kick in the ass that isekai anime needed to see and this is doing a great job. There's actually some interesting information I was told in my last week's review, which I do want to share in episode two's review because I think it's important to realize because one of the things I questioned was because you do have an adult in now a child's body and he remembers his previous life, to me of that said, he's still mentally the same age and honestly it could be creepy because if he's going to start getting embarrassed by a girl that's like eight years old, you can't tell me that's not going to be weird. But what's interesting is I was told that mentally he is his age. He may remember his previous life, but the age that he's at in his body is mentally how he is. So when he gets like embarrassed or you think it's like an older man getting like overly embarrassed by either a young child or basically the MILF of the series, it's actually him just being child innocence of just being embarrassed because it's a female and he's a young boy. I think that's actually quite interesting. I think actually makes it just kind of give me that sigh of relief because I know that they're not going to go flirtatious with it because he's literally a child and that shouldn't be the focus of the story. But seemingly that's not going to be the focus of the story. It's going to be a kid who gets to enjoy life because in his adult life he had nothing that he could look forward to, honestly probably besides death. So to see him be able to just interact with people who have no real malicious intent at least based on what we've seen so far, the most malicious intent you could probably look at with episode 2 is the idea that they could probably profit off this kid, but seemingly they also want him to profit off it as well, so that's a nice little turn of events which I do appreciate, and honestly the idea of introducing seemingly a family of nobles, I thought what they were doing was they were saying, hey there's a child in the forest, he's skilled, let's adopt him. But honestly, they just came to give him a clock because they didn't have a clock to also thank him, but to also get some words of wisdom because this boy, for whatever reason, is more skilled than any of us, and we have a girl who's trying to be a slime tamer, and she wants some advice. And it was interesting seeing the different types of slimes, because I honestly didn't think there was too much you could really do with the concept. You got poison, maybe like electricity, you know, just like elemental slimes. I thought that's all they were going to go. But when you basically get introduced to the washing machine slime, I was sold on the concept of slimes. I was pretty sure they are going to be interesting after last week, but seeing the washing machine slime... I was all on board. I was like, that's incredible. Like so many things in modern day that we take for granted that if we didn't have and had to go back to doing it by hand, many of us would be like, screw this shit, and myself included. And washing clothes by hand, I mean, it's, it's a hard job. So to have a literal slime that you can put your clothing in or your tissues and you just see them cleaning, I think it's brilliant. It actually just gives you a big grin to your face being like, there's so many cool ways to use slimes and like, it was really interesting getting some technicalities like the idea that you shouldn't be able to control a giant slime. It's like, it's impossible. But what he does is he tames like a hundred normal slimes, combines them, and just to see their minds blow alongside the viewers like, we don't even know about slimes because this world is new to us. We don't know what can or can't happen. But every one of us is like, yeah, this is impressive. But we're just kind of agreeing with everyone saying, just kind of being like, this shouldn't happen. Like, how can you do this? Or I think my favorite magical point of the episode was when there's like this rubble on the road after a rainstorm 
and he uses two different combinations of magic to turn them into blocks, and then those blocks get carried off by the slime. It's really interesting how they use magic in a way that's not so bombastic that the magical elements are the priority and the focus of the series, but rather they're just cool elements that give you a unique flair so it's not just them walking down a street and having nothing interesting happen besides the honestly really compelling and emotionally heavy dialogue. Not emotionally heavy in, in the way that it's like depressing, but just really sweet to see someone who deserves to have a nice banter and not have to fear like he's going to get yelled at by his boss to the point that he's going to have a heart attack from anxiety. I also really like the idea of these doors where you can store your entire house in it and this like one butler dude was about to use his and he's like nah 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 I got it and I'm like oh, I got I love Ryoma he's so great. I don't know if I complimented it in episode one but I really do like the character design of Ryoma. I think it's a cute design that has this kind of innocence to it and when you look at who he was in his original life this very stern kind of like stand up straight tie on right businessman and now he gets to just be a kid just enjoying life. I think it's really sweet and a good contrast and gives him that emotional freedom that he's always craved, especially considering he's never had a childhood by the looks of it. And it's really great to see just the numerous pieces of just dialogue that just warms your heart and they even had a chance to be super creepy and they avoided it with grace in this episode. So the whole idea of these washing machine slimes, and I'm always going to call them washing machine slimes because I think it's hilarious and I'm a child myself I guess is that in order to like bait them out you need to have your own dirty water because well they're attached to cleaning things so it makes sense and there's a moment where this girl Illyria she bays and I mean she goes and tames a slime they did nothing weird with it it was literally they avoided all fan service they avoided anything that could be perceived as creepy and just made a scene where she was happy that she got a slime and I was like, thank God, because it shouldn't need to be said that, you know, it's interesting that they finally didn't go creepy with it. But honestly, when you have a premise where an adult reincarnates as a young boy and still has his memories, it should just go weird. But they honestly avoided it with grace, similar to how Sentence of a Bookworm did it. And I really like that about it. So when you look at these two kids, it just feels like a growing friendship. And I really appreciate that. And while there definitely are these like embarrassed faces, it never feels to me like it's like that romantic embarrassment. It's literally child innocence and I appreciate that about the show because this is a very bright, it's a very vibrant series. It doesn't blow you away with crazy animation, but it really doesn't have to. It's a show about someone walking from one location, going to another, experiencing adventures, seeing new people, and having very wholesome moments. And while that may not be everyone's cup of tea and people prefer that more adventurous side where big stakes are happening where the world could be destroyed in 30 days or a year or whatever. To me, this is what we need to see, something that's wholesome, that twists the idea of an isekai world without needing to go threats. And I think that's the difference of a quality writer versus someone who's pretty mediocre, because I think anyone who's watching this review can probably come up with a decent isekai premise. The difference is fleshing it out to be compelling through and through. It takes talent, where something like this, where you have a very basic premise at the start to be able to make it interesting week by week to have just conversations be compelling and wholesome that takes a quality writer and not many i think can do it and that's why i've only seen like the ascendance of a bookworm or now by the grace of the gods really do it with class and i'm honestly so excited for more i definitely think this will be a show that i review on mondays it's just a little easier on my schedule and it's a good way to start out the day watch by the grace of the gods feel nice feel Maybe a bit dramatic depending on where they go, but overall it just feels like a good show to start the week off with, so that's probably going to be the plan going forward. Even if it gets less to use, it's just easier for my schedule, so if you do enjoy the reviews, no, they will be coming, it'll just be coming out sometime on Mondays. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like to share your support, hit that subscribe button if you're happy new round here, and always leave a comment to let me know what you thought about this episode down below. So until next time everyone, please take care, have a good one.